So Jen, we're interviewing Nathan today from Leslie Vernon. I know. I'm not nervous at all. Yeah, clearly. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, I'm super excited about it. I am it. too. I love him. I watched this movie last night. I have night. a brief statement I have to read at the top. Oh, uh, is it a statement then, you wrote? I did not write it. <laughs> no. But yeah, I'm super excited. Ever since I saw Leslie Vernon the first time, I got really, really excited. Yeah, because dude. he's amazing. And really then he is. also is like super responsive on Twitter and stuff. Like mm-hmm. I remember I tagged him in our, our first post about it. I and mean, this was like, when we, when was our episode? It was, it, was like, uh, it was like in the summer, I it think. Was like, it was a while ago. It was like in the teens, right? I think we watched it in the pod loft. So it we was did. Yeah, 14. It was 14. And this so, yeah. was Jacob. This is one of our first guests. Yeah. So yeah, we had Jacob from Modern Horrors on. And I just remember sort of, I'm going to say it, falling in love with oh, Leslie yeah. Vernon. <laughs> Todd had stars in his eyes. I really did. Yeah. It was one step closer to falling in love with horror in general. Well, that's never going to happen. I mean, I like horror comedies and know. it was a horror comedy. If Leslie were in every horror movie, would you like horror? No. No. If it was, if every horror movie was a horror comedy, I would like horror. Well, if Leslie is in every horror movie. <gasps> Guys, this is him. Are you ready? Yeah. Jen. How, how many rings should I do before I answer it? Just so he doesn't feel answer like we're too eager. Okay, sorry. Hey, Nathan. Yeah. So you have Todd, the, the horror virgin, and Jen hey. from the horror virgin. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Todd and Jen? I'm doing great, Jen. We're great. We're so excited to talk to you. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad we're finally able to consummate this, uh, whatever this is. <laughs> I know, man. Believe me, me too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Todd has a brief <laughs> statement he needs to read also. Yeah, so, so my, my, <laughs> uh, Wait a minute. Nobody informed me that it was going to be a preamble. <laughs> <laughs> my, my girlfriend told me that I had to say that if you steal my boyfriend, so if you steal Todd away from her, she's going to come after you Leslie Vernon style and that she does a lot of cardio. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the reality is hot. that Todd would be trying to steal you away. Well, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and that's just because... I hope we're not making it weird <laughs> yeah, right off the bat. I know. We're two minutes in and it's already getting weird. But I'm not sure how much of the premise of the show you know, but I hate horror movies. Uh, and your horror movie, Leslie Vernon, and, and your character as Leslie Vernon was like the first horror movie I actually really enjoyed watching because it's <laughs> sort of a comedy. And also you're just super charming. So whenever <laughs> someone asks me if there's like a movie that I've watched for the podcast that I like, I always end up talking about how much I love you. So I realized this when my girlfriend was like, I'm I'm concerned at how much you bring Nathan up in casual conversation and just generally on the podcast. Yeah. It's on our bingo card. <laughs> yeah. So sorry about you know what's that. Gary is that I, I, I have a feeling that in completely different context it happens with other people who've come into a bit with me and, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully yours is uh, you know flattering uh, <laughs> oh, there's yeah. probably not so much yeah I, man I don't know how anyone could watch the um, uh, Leslie Vernon and not think that you are awesome in it I mean oh, yeah. I, I've heard people that I've talked to about it bring up points about the movie that they didn't love and whatever they're mm. idiots but <laughs> I, like I, there's no way anyone could say anything about your performance specifically yeah well, you know what? Uh, I I was uh, I was getting the feeling like we were bulletproof, and then I read some review the week we came out in theaters. We came out, we closed without a stop. We came out, um, but uh, the last nail in the coffin was this review that I read from uh, I don't know some dude in Portland uh, for some paper up there, and uh, he said, and I didn't even know you could say this in print. He said <laughs> if. If he could suck his own D blank, he would. I mean, honestly. And I was aghast. I mean, I have tried. I, I can't. But uh, <laughs> I, the, the, the fact that, that that's, that's what he picked up from it, you know, and I, I felt like a lot of, um, you know, hard work went into it for sure, but, but yeah. certainly a lot of earnestness as well. And, and I felt it hurt me that this guy came away with a feeling of uh, artificialness or or a hamminess or something like that uh, because I, I was trying really, really hard yeah. to just be, be a, a normal 
or a nice, well, as nice and normal as you can be under those conditions. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you, you had a part to play. And, and speaking right. as someone who's done creative things all of their life, the majority of which have failed, <laughs> like the first thing people will do is just shit on you for making something at all, no matter how good it is. Sure. So sure. I definitely sure. understand that feeling where you're like really excited about a project. And I remember writing, I remember writing a song with a friend of mine and being really, really proud of it. And then we played it for somebody. He goes, Oh man, this is real bad. <laughs> and, that, and that person wasn't just some random like re, like reviewer; it was a friend of ours. <laughs> so right. I understand. Yeah, I could I, I could get I could get nothing but positive uh, you know compliments for the rest of my life. But if there was one reason like that, you know, you would suck it up. That's that's what. Uh, that's all I, what I'll remember. Yeah. Oh man, that is t- totally me. It doesn't matter how many positive things people say; it's the one negative thing that sticks with me. Yeah. Yeah. So to bring right. it back to actually Leslie Vernon uh, <laughs> as a movie, how did you end up getting that part as Leslie Vernon? How did that whole project come together for it you? It was an audition. It was an audition that my agent set up, and I went to it. And I, if I remember correctly, um, I don't remember correctly, but uh, <laughs> there, there, there was. There was a you know casting director there, and uh, and I think it was either a callback or or what I don't remember. But in any case, uh, eventually David Stevie and Scott Glosserman were there in, at in the audition room, and um, along with the casting director and uh, Angela was there, and I was able to just kind of play around with her, and she, and she was real game, and mm-hmm. um, that's kind of how that went. Uh, it was just kind of uh, the most playful kind of pairing that uh, they ended up going with. I think they um, had a lot of really tough uh, problems to solve in their casting. Oh, really? And uh, I, I, yeah, I I remember getting a call from Scott Glosserman um, when they were, I don't remember if this was after the callback or before the callback. In any case, he was just really perplexed because um, the the vision that they had for um, who Leslie Vernon was going to be was a lot more closer to your traditional, you know, Jason type physicality Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just really big physically intimidating presence. And uh, that's how they envisioned the whole thing up until the point of my audition. And then Mm -hmm. they started seeing things a completely different way. And that (laughs) really complicated things because suddenly um, it becomes a completely different kind of comedy. Um, it than, does, yeah. Than what they were, um, you know, originally contemplating. I think that's uh, one of the reasons but, I loved uh, it so much. Yeah, is is because well, like, it had a kind of, uh, in my opinion, it had a kind of like uh, you know, waiting for Guffman's final tap yes, kind mm-hmm. of exactly you know, yeah. feel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and your so, charisma is what really sells that movie yeah, too, and it that, is. the movie rests on you, and that's why we love it so much. And that's just well, just to be clear, that, because we love you so much, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, you know, I, I we're still uh, am grateful for the uh, experience and the opportunity. It was my first film. I got to work in both a kind of uh, you know video and uh, a filmic format. You know, I had to. Uh, uh, I, I was in a lot of uh, screen time. Uh, you know, it was, it was an experience like none other, mm-hmm. and I'm grateful for it. Um, and I, and I think that the end product was, was, uh, you know, something to be proud of, but, um, I, I still, and I had that, and I believe that, uh, that had they gone with a more traditional route, you know, I, I heard on the other side of the audition wall, I heard guys doing exactly what you would envision this character doing if you read the script, you know, and he's mm-hmm. yelling and he's threatening, you know, and all that. And mm-hmm. I just felt like, no, that's not evil that doesn't scare me you know what scares me is somebody that i can relate to Mm -hmm. who's doing some really fucked up things that i can't reconcile you know yeah um but but not anybody who is so powerless that he's um uh desperate for uh uh, you know the the, his opposition to submit to him you know he's Mm -hmm. not there's nothing desperate about that that's not you know, evil isn't desperate. It's plotting and it's methodical and it's mm-hmm. patient and it's um, and and it's unrelenting. You know, it never stops. That's right. that's what's scary about evil. Yeah, Absolutely. and you don't let yourself get close to someone who's really imposing and who scares you right away. 
Yeah. But, yeah, but totally. Leslie Vernon's the kind of guy who could pick up any chick at the bar <laughs> and then would take them back to his place and kill them. Like he's that, he's like more like Ted Bundy than a Jason. Yeah. And I find Ted Bundy well, a lot scarier than Jason. Mm-hmm. I think that was the part that was exciting for me, interesting for me, because I knew I was going to be able to explore um, real ugliness, real evil, if I was, you know, for the most part, um, a down-to-earth and relatable guy who mm. didn't apologize for what he did, didn't have to apologize for what he did. He loved what he did. Right. Yeah, he, he, was, did. He, he, was, he, he was a proud advocate of what he did. He just, you know, was trying to be selective about who he let into his into his world, you know? Right. Um, you know, but he's, he's shouting from the rooftops. He, he loves what he does. Right. Um, and that's so what's crazy how, about how, the movie is he's telling her exactly what he's going to do. He's spelling it all absolutely. out, but he's so chari- charismatic that she goes with it, you know? Yeah. So, so how do you, you know, how do you find and, and you know, where she go to explore um, somebody who does some really incredibly um, horrific, uh, gruesome, evil things and has no remorse about it. Right. Exactly. And that's so fascinating to people too. That's why true crime is so huge right now. Yeah. So let me ask this in sort of relation to what we're sort of talking about. So, um, how much of the character creation of Leslie Vernon was what you brought to the table and how much was on the page? Cause it sounds like they had a direction they were going with what was on the page, but you sort of came in and gave it this new, you had this new thought behind it. And it seems like it sort of went with your direction. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it was definitely a collaboration. Uh, I, I don't know where, where Leslie started and ended with me and started and ended with Scott and David. You know, it felt like everything was on the page to me. Um, you know, there's very few scripts that I've ever read that were as clean and, and, and clearly understandable and, um, uh, it's just clean, you know, just streamlined, everything paid off. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I imagine the script of Die Hard, you know, read very like clockwork, you know, just mm-hmm. very clean. And, and, uh, and so it was exciting to, um, read a script that I felt like I understood so, um, instinctually. Yeah. Um, and so it, there just wasn't really any, uh, a whole lot of, um, uh, I don't know, proprietary uh, quality to it. I, I felt like if Scott had a, a suggestion, you know, I was game to try it out. And um, and likewise, if David had a suggestion as well. You know, I remember the first time we were doing um, uh, shooting the boy in the apple orchard. Um, and uh, it was the first time I had the mask on. And basically the first time I was doing that character, we'd been shooting all on um, you know, video up, up to that point. Right. And, uh, this was our first, um, you know, um, uh, 35 millimeter, you know, uh, content that we were shooting and our first, uh, execution of the vision of who this, you know, creature is. And, um, and I was doing all this kind of stupid stuff. I thought I put a lot of thought into it and everything like that. And I was uh, just, there, there are little remnants that you can see every now and then, you know, where mm-hmm. I'm just kind of doing little movements or gestures or something like that. Mm-hmm. And Scott stopped me at one point pretty early on, thankfully, and said, you don't need to do all that stuff. You just stand there, you know, just, <laughs> just stand there and mm-hmm. hold the, hold the sides and, you know, just stand there. <laughs> and uh, I was like, got it. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I knew he understood his job. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I did, you know, I, I tried to use some research before I watched um, uh, uh, Friday the 13th mm-hmm. for the first time uh, before I went off to shoot. I'd already seen uh, Nightmare on Elm Street mm-hmm. uh, 1 and 2 um, when I was a kid, um, and that stuck with me. But, um, but you know, I didn't do a whole lot. Of, I, I just got around to watching Halloween for the first time last year. Oh, really? So, yeah, I'm, me too. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm scared of horror movies too. <laughs> oh, so, thank you. I, that was actually going to be one of my questions because I they terrify me. Did you? Did, so you didn't grow up watching horror movies like Jen or Mikey? I, you know, I I I, I saw, like I said, uh, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street one and two. Uh, my uncle owned a owned a video store uh, up in Washington. We uh, went to visit him one time, and we just grabbed whatever we wanted to off the shelves. That's basically when I when I, you know, saw, I, I, I saw Exorcist, you know, I saw, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I saw, so, you know, some, but, mm-hmm. you know, I, it, it was never anything that really, I don't know, it just, it really, 
it scared me, and I didn't always. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't understand you know, people that scared? love being scared. Like that, it's not an emotion I like. <laughs> oh, but it's, Jen it's, loves it. I, don't, yeah. I really do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I have not I've developed an appreciation since then, and actually, behind the mask, like you were talking about, behind the mask has served to do that for me too, where um, it allowed me a kind of intellectual approach sometimes. Uh, to distance myself viscerally from the experience, I can I can take a little more of a visceral backseat and, and approach it from a, a kind of conceptual point of view. You know, mm-hmm. examining uh, genre convention and things like that. You know, that that, that helps um, sometimes when I'm uh, getting a little overwhelmed by whatever's going on. You know, sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> How does it feel to be an antihero that people love in a genre that you're not crazy about? Oh, oh, I, I am crazy. I've, I've learned to love it. Um, it's just, oh, absolutely. But it's just one that, you know, really I find extremely effective mm-hmm. on me, especially. And that's part of why I love it is I love to be, it's really cathartic to watch something really scary. And it's not that it's not yeah, effective not, on me. It really scares me. I just don't like being scared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's hard to subject you know, but I've got a, I've got a 15 year old and I've got a 12 year old and they both, um, uh, want to watch horror movies, and so I've actually had more of an introduction through them um, than I ever had, um, you know, prior to them. We we would watch Sven Gulli on Saturday nights, and you know, whatever his his uh, classic horror movie programming was. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we saw a lot of old and uh, and then we just have been picking ones, you know, one by one, um, and so we're. I, I, with them, I'm, I've actually been getting my education in, in uh, the horror genre, which is uh, it's, it's funny to me. Well, so what kind of subgenre do you think Leslie would do really well in? Because he f- is very effective in the slasher genre, I think, because there's so many rules and you can think through things. Do you think there's another genre? Like, how would he do in a haunted house? Oh, I guess good. I would never go into a haunted house. <laughs> I wouldn't either. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't go with Leslie Vernon. <laughs> no, he's probably rigged uh, all that. It does, it does scare me. I just walked past uh, uh, an office yesterday, and there were so many people in the room because they were eating cake and celebrating somebody's birthday, and they asked me if I wanted cake, and I just looked at all those people in the room, and I thought, there's no way I'm going in there. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, are you crazy? Can you bring the cake no, out here I to me? I don't care how badly I want cake. That cake's the best cake ever. I am not going in that room. Exactly. Yeah, I'm with you. And you never know. The nicest person in that room could get close to you and turn out to be a killer, you know? They probably are. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I have a question. So I think if I was on the street in L.A. walking, which I think is where you live, correct? Uh, and if I was walking in the other direction and saw you walking, I would definitely recognize you. <laughs> Does that ever happen to you? Or is, is, is mm-hmm. it so far removed? So when people recognize you, do they mix you up? Do they call you Leslie? Yeah. <laughs> We've talked about um, you as both you know, Nathan I, and Leslie on yeah. the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interchangeable at this point. It's so much cool. Um, yeah, I, um, I, I do this stuff uh, now and then. And uh, yeah, generally, if they know who I am, then they know the movie well enough. They remember the uh, you know, it's kind of an obscure name. It's uh, not one that you think would be easily, you know, memorable. But mm-hmm. it seems to not be a problem for a lot of. I just went to a video, a video store a couple of weeks ago, and uh, there was a guy who was sitting there, kind of a gog, and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that always uh, uh, that tickled me. That's awesome. <laughs> well, it's on Shutter now too, so it's really accessible. You know. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh yeah. So, do you think there's going to be a sequel? Um, gosh, you know, <laughs> there's been talk about that off and on for uh-huh. years. Uh, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, 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 I there, there's just so many things that would have to, um, you know, happen in a long place in order for that to happen. Mm-hmm. And I just don't see those things happening anytime soon. You know what? Um, I feel like, um, Something that excites me um, about a sequel is actually the more that time passes Mm -hmm. um, between the original and what the sequel would be. It feels like um, you have a real opportunity to play with, um, to highlight um, some really interesting uh, distinctions in 
in, in horror, especially in, in sequels and mm-hmm. uh, everything. I, I, I'm I not uh, discouraged to the more time that passes by and mm-hmm. without there being a sequel. I'm actually encouraged because it feels like it would actually be much, much more interesting. Yeah, I mean, um, if, I- if Leslie's come back, if it's, uh, <laughs> isn't until way later than anybody thought, mm-hmm. especially him. And if it's way later, I could see a really, really fun movie where you are playing, like, because uh, in the movie, and I forget the actor's name, who's playing sort of like your Leslie is sort of his protege, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I for, right. I forget right. his name in the movie, but Scott Wilson. Yes, mm-hmm. thank you. I could see yeah. him as your uh, like you being you, the you mentor. You being now. the mentor. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think his name is Eugene in the movie. Right. Is that right? Yeah. So you being that, and then training a new class of Leslie Vernon, and that that could bring up a whole. Like, well, I mean, because you have all these rules in mm-hmm. Leslie Vernon that you follow to, you know, make sure you're safe and, mm-hmm. you know, you got to do all this cardio. And um, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I sort of wonder how those rules would change because, you know, if it is because uh, Leslie Vernon came out uh, over 10 years ago, right? Yeah, it was about 12 years ago. For right? me, it came yeah. out last year. <laughs> uh, so, but, but it came out so long ago that, like, I mean, cell phones are a lot more common now. And, you know, there's a lot, like, you have the smart ringers on doors that you'd have to contend with now. So, like, would your rules still hold up or would you have to change the rules, do you think, in order to make Leslie Vernon still as effective? Well, that's funny because uh, there was a rewrite that uh, Stevie did last year, I think. He updated the script a little bit. Oh, and really? uh, and there and there were little beats in there about how um, uh, things have changed. Mm-hmm. Just in that amount of time alone, things have changed, and uh, and you have to um, update your your methods to uh, accommodate <laughs> the, the you know the change of the times. Yeah. Well, and one of the things about like a meta kind of movie like Behind the Mask is you're explaining a lot of these rules and you're kind of you're kind of blowing up slasher spots. So, you know, what comes next is you have to evolve past that. And I think right, that that was right. kind of a phase in horror and then it moved into a new direction. Yeah, we're in a we're in a um a micro budget period right now that um uh it is about just trying to find eyeballs however you can do it mm-hmm. yeah. and um you know we, it, it definitely uh has just about every gimmick in the book has been tried so far mm-hmm. and um um i i think that's something that people appreciate about behind the map is that at, at its at its very you know basic premise uh it's it's a an examination of an, an affectionate love note towards um horror movie slashers in particular. Yeah. And, uh, and it never feels like you're making fun of slashers at all. No, no, no. And there's, it's a, it's there's a much so more... much uh, reverence that we, we tried to, uh, that we tried to uh, pack into, mm-hmm. you know, just about every frame so that people would feel like um, whether they were fans of the genre or not, um, knowledgeable of the genre or not, um, they could find things on multiple viewings, um, things to appreciate it and investigate about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, it holds up like that, you know, for our fans, especially that can notice, you know, little, little set, um, things that have been placed in, in key areas, mm-hmm. uh, to, to suggest, um, that we're, we're tying into, uh, a, one of the franchises. And, um, I, I think fans find that it came hotter's presence in it. It's just, it brief, Mm-hmm. You know, look at the camera as he's, you know, standing in front of Elm Street House. You know, the, those little touches like that, I think, appeal to um, to the fans because they notice that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully the humor is what brings people back who, who weren't, you know, a fan. Yeah. And um, and the intellectual approach kind of informs them for future viewings. Yeah. Well, it, every time I watch it, I pick something new up and I just love it a little more. Um, what was it like to work yeah. with uh, those kinds of actors, like those legends like Robert England? Oh, man. <laughs> that was great. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, he was uh, he was great. And he's become a friend. He's just a really great guy. And, oh, really? Uh, and... Oh my God, and he's he's just been so supportive, uh, and he loves the film too. He uh-huh. um, has been such a great cheerleader for it. 
um, wherever he goes, he represents for it. Um, people pop out of the woodwork and ask him to sign stuff for Behind the Mask, and he's only too happy to have an excuse to talk about Behind the Mask to people. I've had reports from people who've been to cons around the world who said, oh, man, Robert was just going off and seeing the nice thing, you know, things about uh, Behind the Mask and about you. And I'm like, yeah, he does that. It's awesome. <laughs> you know, I have to say, I don't know if I like the idea of you two being too friendly I with know, each right? other. <laughs> like, you just described one of my worst nightmares. Freddie and Leslie Vernon being best friends is terrifying to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, watch out. Uh, when uh, We went to, what was it, uh, Oh, South by Southwest. Was that last year? The year before? It might have been the year before. Anyway, um, um, and uh, just hanging out in the hotel lobby, uh, <laughs> the, the bar lobby, um, was, I mean, I could do that for hours, just <laughs> sit there and drink and listen to a talk. Oh, I'm sure he's got tons of awesome stories, <laughs> yeah. too. He's never stopped sharing stories. He's a nonstop storyteller. Oh, really? That's, 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 he does not stop. <laughs> Sharing stories. Oh my goodness! He does not stop. He has all the stories, and he shares them, all of them. Are they good stories? They're awesome. They're <laughs> all fantastic. They are the best stories. He has all of them, and they are all the best. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! I mean, he's been around in the genre for forever. Yeah, he's he's been in the scene. He, he as knows it were. everybody. He's seen everybody work, and he's a real, real fan of um, the. Uh, uh, genre, um, and and he's uh, uh, a cheerleader for it. Um, just the best ambassador for the genre ever. And, uh, and whether the projects that he's involved with or not, um, you'll see on his Twitter page all the time. You know, mm-hmm. he, I just saw this. You know, and he doesn't <laughs> necessarily know anybody in it. He's like, watch this person. They are one to watch. Oh. Man, that was cool. You know, he just loves good acting. Oh, that's great. That's great when somebody that's so well known in the genre is really will lift up other people like yeah. that are just getting started. Someone who sort of lives by the um, you know, rising tide lifts all ships mentality mm-hmm. instead of instead of a, well, if they have this, I can't have it mentality. Right. Which is unfortunately sure. a problem. Yeah. Well, you know, that's that's the way it, it tends to be for, for any kind of business, let mm-hmm. alone that. Um, you know, the acting or entertainment industry, it, it, yeah. it feels like it's, uh, yeah, it feels like it's a zero sum game of if, yeah. if I'm, if you're, if you're having some success, then that must mean there's less success for me to have. Right. Um, and, uh, there's some people that, that have kind of elevated themselves about that kind of thinking. He's one of them. Definitely. That's, That's awesome. awesome yeah. Now, I, you got you just mentioned that um, you know you and Robert were out south at South by Southwest uh, maybe you uh-huh. know last year or the year before. Do you go to horror <laughs> conventions often, or is that was that like a one off? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, well, we were there um, because we were celebrating the tenth anniversary of, of um, Behind the Mask debuting at South by Southwest, oh. and. Uh, and then we were also promoting, I believe, the 10th anniversary DVD reissue. Mm-hmm. And um, so she was there, and uh, we got some of the other cast there, and, and the director was there, and David, and uh, yeah, it was a fun time. Um, I, I love going to clubs, and um, like I said, I, I have fallen in love with this uh, community of people. Um, and uh, any time I get invited along, I I can't believe, first of all, that <laughs> um, you know people <laughs> people are willing to pay me money <laughs> for me to sign my name on pictures of myself. I mean, are you kidding? That's crazy. And the other part is that you know I'm, it's it's always I'm guaranteed to be surrounded by great people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I enjoy when I get invited. I'm always surprised when I get invited. Yeah. I've tried to talk people out of it sometimes. Uh, <laughs> when, uh, when, when they've they invited me and offered me, you know, a guarantee to show up, I'm like, do you know this movie? Have you seen it? But, uh, I don't think you're going to get that many people trying to ask for it. Whatever, whatever. Uh, you want to pay me? I'll, I'll yeah. rent you. Well, one of the things that we've noticed about the horror community is everybody is so nice. 
You know, like it's yeah. kind of one of those communities that if you're outside of it, they can seem because of just the subject matter, they could seem kind of intimidating or maybe you think people are going to be sure. jerks. But the horror people are so cool. I, I learned that because I it, it's sort of weird for a guy to openly admit that he's scared of scary things. And I was afraid that there would just be a bunch of dudes in the horror community making fun of me and then making fun of the podcast <laughs> by association, you know, but it's been completely the opposite. Yeah. Everyone's been super supportive and nice. And I was very surprised by that. Yeah. Cause I feel well, like everybody I, can I connect think, to that. Yeah. You found the, uh, you found the perfect time to have just demonstrating sheer terror. Um, <laughs> just as the, just as the makers intended, um, you're, you're kind of the perfect guinea pig. And you're so public about it. That's really admirable. It's not the first time someone's called me the perfect guinea pig. (laughs) (laughs) Can we ask you a couple of questions about the movie? Because I've got some, I'm curious about some things. So first of all, how much cardio do you do now? (laughs) <laughs> did, yeah, did you keep up um, the cardio? And let me tell you, that is the line in the movie. And I think it's like 10 minutes in, but that was when I fell in love with the movie. I was like, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good one, yeah. Um, I, uh, I just finished a four and a half mile run. Wow. And, uh, and I feel pretty darn good about it. The thing uh, said that it burned 708 calories. <laughs> so you do the math. That's amazing. I can. Now, did you run it straight or did you sprint it and then walk when you saw people coming and then start sprinting again? <laughs> no, you know, I, I, I never pulled that off. We shot that scene twice, the run walk scene. Um, we, we shot that twice for use in the movie. That's what mm-hmm. you're referencing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and uh, we never pulled it off because uh, <laughs> um, the first time. Um, we just didn't uh, have the right uh, setup. We just didn't shoot correctly. And then um, the second time, uh, I pulled a hammy, oh, and uh, I, was, uh, I was not able to face uh, Angela at the oh. speed required because she's actually very bad. Mm. <laughs> Don't tell her. I Is told she? You. Maybe she planned it that she, way. I couldn't. I couldn't. I, was, I told her. Um, oh, you know, because I was all cocky and everything like that. Because <laughs> yeah, I run it. Whatever. And uh, like, yeah, you just you know, don't worry about me. Just run as fast as you can. And man, she ran so fast. I wish I hadn't told her run as fast as you can because I just couldn't catch her. I, oh, it was embarrassing. Oh, I do love that line though. And another one that I like is, uh, "Do you have any pet? I don't keep pets. I can't eat." So, do you have yeah, pets? Yeah. <laughs> Not one that I would eat. Oh, no. that's good. So, do you have pets? Um, no, 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 I don't. I'm petless right now. Did you eat your pets and that's why you don't have them? <laughs> <laughs> Never did, but it makes sense. I mean, it just makes sense. Yeah, you suspiciously you get a, don't a, have a pets. Good couple, couple of days worth of soup out of a turtle. <laughs> you could, yeah. And I love that they were named after the pets in Pet Cemetery, too. That was fantastic. Um, so I have another that, question, that was- too, because you talk about sabotaging um, the axes and some of the weapons. Do you think Leslie uh-huh. sabotaged that cider press? Oh, yeah. You think so? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you do see him in the post credit scene. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. you kill that uh-huh. poor coroner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, that was actually the, the very last scene, which made it into the trailer for the movie, but never made it into the movie itself because we just weren't able to pull it off. Um, we shot in a, a courthouse in downtown Portland, um, a scene where um, uh, Taylor is being uh, prosecuted mm-hmm. for the murder. Um, really? she, they won't believe, they didn't believe uh, her, you know, insistence that it, it's this guy, this Leslie mm-hmm. Byrne, like it's a figment of your imagination, a shadow it doesn't exist. And of course, you know, he, he, he doesn't. And, uh, and, uh, um, it's it's this guy, you know. They 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 um uh bring out a, a TV monitor, like a closed closed circuit, you know, TV mm-hmm. uh, feed to the to the um with the that guy with the autopsy guy, the corner guy, uh, corner, yeah, yeah, and uh, uh and she, he he did it. He's the one, you know, and, and Leslie's on the slab and mm-hmm. and get out of there. You gotta you gotta get out of there. He's not dead, you know. And, uh, he's he's very dead, you know. I can assure you. And then Leslie gets up, and then he kills the guy, and then he pulls the feed, and that's supposed to be the end of it. There's a great bit with uh, 
there's a lot of England, you know, shouting, you know, hey, you got a heart attack, so mm-hmm. they're dragging them out of the bailiffs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we didn't have um, enough uh, people in uh, extras in the courtroom, and uh, we couldn't pull it off. It, it mm-hmm. just looked so obviously um, not a rabid town of people demanding <laughs> heads mm-hmm. and answers. And uh, it, it just ended up looking really bad. Yeah. So there was a good take that they pulled for the trailer, but um, unfortunately, that that little closed circuit TV bit that that's that's all we get yeah. that uh, showed up in the uh, in think, the, the credits. I think it's a perfect way to end the movie, though, especially since it doesn't happen until the very last seconds, too. Yeah. Oh yeah! Like I you keep watching. I thought they found a fantastic use for that. And that song. I mean, come on! Mm-hmm. Once the song comes on, you want to stick around just for the day of that song. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So we were talking, our April Fool's Day episode is about to drop, and we were talking about how the kids in that movie are so dumb that Leslie would have taken all of them out, no problem. (laughs) So do you think there's any particular movies where the group of kids you would have an easier time with or a worse time with? And I realize I just said you. I mean Leslie Vernon. (laughs) Uh, um, Like, how do you think you would do with the Nightmare on Elm Street kids? You think you would get them when yeah. Robert England didn't? I don't. I, you know what? I I I tend to think in all these movies, even the um, teens that are really, really super annoying. <laughs> I tend yeah. to think. I I mean, I guess I get how they should be punished for sinning, but <laughs> do, they, do they deserve to die like this? I mean, do, do yeah. they really deserve to die? <laughs> um, yeah, I still haven't. You know, wrap my 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 Nathan's head around that. Um, Le- 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 Leslie probably has some different thoughts about that. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, I I don't uh, I don't I don't recommend um, punishing. You don't <laughs> recommend like murder that. as a punishment for like having <laughs> no. premarital sex, is what you're saying? No, I just I think have, have a conversation, talk to him. Yeah. Talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> It might not be, you know, the least awkward conversation you've ever had, but just talk about it. Yeah, but better than killing them. Right. You know? always, always better. <laughs> always better. <laughs> well, I think that may be all the questions that we have for you, Nathan. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I... I oh, we, oh, I oh, got wait. one more. I read that you worked on A Thousand Ways to Die. Oh, and yeah. I yeah. used to love that show. <laughs> Did you? Yes. Yeah, wasn't it, wasn't it a fun one? It really was. Yeah, it was, you know, when you have your DVR and the ones that you want to watch first, that was one of my go-tos, the first record watch. Yeah. It was, I loved that show. So, awesome work on yeah. it. Yeah, it, it was a good show. I came into it around the third or fourth season, I guess. Um, and uh, so I was a little late in the game, but I, I really appreciated the format and some of the yeah. people who were, um, who were, uh, um, producing that show, which is really, you know, they were as wacky as that show was and just mm-hmm. delightful. So, um, so it was, a, it was all in a real fun show. It was really yeah. fun to watch. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Nathan, I, I just want to thank you. Oh, wait, I just have one final question for me personally. <laughs> and that is, will you be my best friend? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I deleted that from the list. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm glad you asked at the end of the conversation because uh, you you kind of wormed your way into my heart. Oh. Uh, yeah, you're my nailed. You're, you're on a row of best friend status. Nice. Oh. I, I knew that I I knew that we would have a good interview with you when you when I mean I didn't even we we had never talked before and we just did an episode about you and I I typically just for like social media purposes look up like actors and things I can tag in the movies and you were like the first one that responded ever and I I, I literally we have like a text group right and I mm-hmm. text the group like oh my god Leslie Vernon just responded to our oh, tweets yeah. he and like, totally fangirled out it was really funny <laughs> so this is the culmination of what I. I will say is like a dream come true for yeah. me. So a big thank you for uh, just being willing to do the interview and talking to us. Oh yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, I, I always appreciate. I, I feel like behind the mask fans. I've met a lot of horror fans, but I feel like behind the mask fans are a completely unique breed. 
and uh, I always I always enjoy um, meeting them. And so uh, I could I could tell right off the bat that um, you guys were uh, were good behind the mask fans. <laughs> oh, we loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Nathan, uh, um, thank you so much. We appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. Thanks for reaching out. And, oh, yeah. uh, good luck. Uh, for, for your Absolutely. Right. Thank you, Nathan. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, my God. That was awesome. I just talked to Nathan. I need a moment. I know. That was awesome. Like I, He oh is my gosh. such a nice guy. He is. Oh, my God. It makes me want to watch the movie again, and I just watched it last night. I know. Yes. He's awesome. And I, I'm actually going out to L.A. later this year. Oh, really? And I'm, Maybe you guys can run together. He, yeah, that would be awesome. He, That would be <laughs> no joke. I would, like, live stream that whole thing. Um, us just, like, at, at just like. Just run, run, and stop. <laughs> At, like, Griffith Park, yeah. Just, like, <laughs> running up behind people and, like, as they turn around, just, like, walking and pretending like uh-huh. we're talking, having a conversation, and then, like, getting closer and closer. That yeah, would be You're awesome. going to get assaulted if you do that. <laughs> Somebody's going to pepper spray. I'm definitely going to get arrested. <laughs> yeah. But let's be clear. That's probably going to happen anyway. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, Leslie, thank you so much. Yes. Leslie, oh, my God. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for doing the interview. We appreciate it. We're yeah, gonna, um, thank you. We're going to close it up here, but that was... Truly amazing, guys. That was awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey, we'll go see- watch Behind the Mask with yes. Leslie Vernon. It's on Shutter right now. It's on Shutter right now. And tell your friends to go watch it. Yeah, get it's some amazing. interest. It really and is great. We want a sequel. We want a squeakquel. A squeakquel. Yes. I don't want a squeakquel. I want a sequel. It could be Alvin Simon Theodore getting like murdered he by would Leslie eat Vernon. Those chipmunks. Yeah, you would. Oh, okay. Maybe I do want. It a would be awesome. <laughs> it's just Jason Lee crying over the the, the, <laughs> the, the corpses of. The- Wait, this oh. is getting very it real. It is. Yeah. Listen. Nathan, I'll get, I'll get you my first 30 pages in a week. <laughs> right. It's called Behind the Masks, dollar sign. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, all right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this Leslie Vernon interview. Uh, we'll get you back to your regularly scheduled podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Nerds. <laughs>